Um, Mr. Johansson here. So uh, <clears throat> I want to go over uh, mechanics number three. So this is just going to be a quick presentation of mechanics number three. All right, so let's talk about that. Start out with a wonderful quote. Soren Kierkegaard said, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. I'll let you guys get to about 50 or so, and you'll understand that beautifully. So, you know, hang on to that one. All right, so I um, have some homework problems there. A man running at 1.4 meters per second sees a young kid run by him. It's not going to let that happen. So he accelerates at 0.2 meters per second squared for four seconds. How fast is he going now? All right, why do we do that? All right. As always in physics problems, Gibbons, jot down the Gibbons. A man running, okay, so this initial velocity is 1.4 meters per second, right? Uh, sees the kid, he accelerates at 0 0.2 meters per second squared, and he does this for four seconds. We would like to know what the final velocity is when he does that. Okay, so if we look at these things, what the, is the formula? If I take acceleration plus change in velocity over time, that expands to Vf minus Vi over T. Okay, now I can mess around. I'm looking to get Vf by itself, so At. I multiplied both sides by t, so the t drops out here. Follow it. All right. At equals Vf minus Vi. All right. Well, what can I do with that? All right. Um, if I'm looking for final velocity, how about I add Vi to both sides? So now I would have final velocity equals At plus Vi. How handy. S and S. Please make sure you write, rewrite the formula. VI, I'm sorry, VF equals, and we'll just write it VI plus AT. Works out nicely. So we're going to solve by substituting in right here. All right, so take a look. VI, 1.4 meters per second, plus, let's do parentheses, 0 0.2 meters per second squared times 4 seconds, okay, so you have 1.4 meters per second, plus, well, what's 0.2 times 4 seconds? Good, 0 0.8 meters per second. Notice the second here cancels the second squared there, so it's meters per second adding to meters per second. That works. Can you ever add meters per second to meters per second squared? Please say no, okay? So 1.4 plus 0.8 is now 2.2 meters per second. Okay? So, moving faster. Beautiful. Um, look at the next problem. Next problem is a bullet sh is shot into the air and returns to the ground 22 seconds later. It's asking how high did the bullet go? Let's think about this for a second. Bullet shot into the air up, 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 till it comes to a stop, and down, down, down. Well, wonderful thing about projectiles is that it's symmetric all the time. To get all the way up to the top, and then all the way back down, took a total of 22 seconds. That means it's 11 seconds on the way up. That's 11 seconds on the way down. Do you see how to do it now? It's an 11 second drop problem. Do it in your head please. 11 second drop problem starts at zero, ends at, after 11 seconds, remember it's 10 meters per second every single second, so it's 11 seconds times 10 meters per second squared, 110 meters per second is the final velocity. What's the average velocity? 55 meters per second times 11 seconds. Can't do it. But you can do 55 times 10, that's 550, add another 55 to that, 605 meters. You should do the problems like that in your head and you should not take a long time doing them. We should get fast at this. That's what we do here in physics. We start thinking things through quickly. 
Okay? It helps us a lot when we're doing more advanced problems that have so many parts to them for you to be able to grab data and, and see it clearly like that. Yeah, it'll benefit you a lot. All right, so today, talking um, final velocity, right? If you take an acceleration equation and solve for final velocity, that's just what we did here. All right, on the example problem, that is exactly what we did. The acceleration equation equals Vf minus Vi over T. That means AT equals Vf minus Vi. Add Vi to both sides. So Vf equals Vi plus AT. Another formula for you. Very useful. All right. The next column is all about the one to remember. This particular formula, the reason it's the one to remember is we use this a lot. It's surprising how much we use this. So I want to show you um, some applications of this formula very, very quickly. The formula is, of course, on your reference tables. It is the one, two, three, it is the fourth formula down on your reference tables. It is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Why is that one one we use all the time? Well, well the reason is, or at least part of the reason is, it could show us how high up an object goes if we know the time of flight. Okay, we're here on Earth, so we know acceleration due to gravity. Notice how we work this. I throw an object up in the air and time the total flight. Time the total flight. All right. Um, if it was six seconds, that means it's three seconds up, three seconds down. Okay? Um, any number of seconds, right up till air friction, because the velocities get so high, starts really messing with it. This works beautifully. Okay. To do the problem, it's kind of easiest to start it right there. So call that your initial velocity. That way you know your initial velocity is zero meters per second. So in other words, we're going to cut the time in half, and we're just going to turn it into a drop problem. That works wonderfully in this formula. The way we do that, we say VI equals zero meters per second. Please don't leave out units there. And then we make three dots in this arrangement. That stands for, therefore, D equals one half AT squared. It is nice and easy. There's no problem with that. Just Remember, D does not equal one-half AT squared. That is a lie. The only time you can say that is if you've shown clearly that the first term drops out because the initial velocity is zero meters per second. Now you could talk about the distance it's fallen as one-half AT squared. Let's look at how it would come out here. Now you do Gibbons formula S and S just like normal. I'm just concentrating right here for simplicity. One-half, 9.8 meters per second squared times three seconds, and look at how I do the parentheses here. Three seconds, and I put the square outside of that. Because if I say three seconds squared, you might tend to think it just means three seconds squared. The square is just with the seconds. We want that square, square to distribute over both the three and the seconds. Notice that square seconds will cancel here. Beautiful. So on our calculators then, 0.5 times 9.8 times 3, square that 3, 44.1. Does that jibe with how far an object falls in 3 seconds? Starts at 0, ends at 30, averages 15 for 3 seconds, that's 45. 44.1, I think we got ourselves something here. It works. The formula, D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Um, that's one of the better formulas we have. So that is the one to remember. Remember, when you're using that, you really need to cut uh, the velocity in half. 
I mean, I'm sorry, cut the time of flight in half so that you're half of the time you're going up, half the time you're going down. Just do it as a drop problem. Now, you could do as a, you can start off other ways if you would like. You could start off just the initial and go up. The problem is, then you know your final velocity. It makes it a little bit more awkward um, and you'd need a different formula. Still would work. I'm showing you the easy way. Might want to think about that. Right, on the back of the page, I talk about average velocity. You want to be able to quickly grab what an average velocity is. Now, remember, and, and not everybody always remembers how to do an average. If I want an average velocity, how, what does that equal in terms of a VI and a VF? Right? If I was moving two meters per second, and a short time later, I was moving three meters per second. How do I find my average? All right? You know the average is going to be halfway between them, 2.5. So how do you find that average? And I think you could probably see it. It would be VI plus VF divided by 2. That's all. But remember that. And remember how you found it, right? So. An average velocity. Now, when is an average velocity legitimate? Well, think about it. If I'm moving along at two meters per second, and all of a sudden I go real huge acceleration, I'm almost at three meters per second, but then over the next five seconds, I very slowly accelerate till I'm at three meters per second. Can I get an average there? No, I can't, because I, I sped up way too fast, and then I did not continue speeding up. So the only way you could do and be legitimate with an average is if acceleration stays constant the whole time. That's not so hard. Any object being dropped, the acceleration is constant. So it will speed up smoothly. With that being said, then an average is absolutely something you want, right? So um, you could do that, all right? So once you've determined average velocity, <coughs> you could use it in some formulas just the way you would any regular velocity, provided the situation calls for using the average velocity instead of the initial and final velocities. The most common place to use it is in the velocity, distance, and time relation. Okay, makes it very easy. So um, you can use this all over the place. Uh, an object was going 11 meters per second. Five seconds later, it was going 19 meters per second. What's the average velocity? All right. 11 meters per second plus 19 meters per second. That's 30 meters per second. Divide that by 2. So the average velocity equals 15 meters per second there. Right? So you're multiplying that by whatever time it took to do that. So a lot of these, if you can grab the average velocity, you can do the whole thing in your head very quickly and correctly. So pretty useful. Right? So do the example problem on that. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching Mechanics number three.